outside to our side. Stronger than the veneer. There are logs and then there are logs. This is truly one of the finest examples of a rosewood log I have ever seen. This log came from the jungles of Cambodia. It is Dalbergia. What's the rest of it? Not Chinese? Co Cochin Chinensis. Cochin Chinensis. Dalbergia Cochin Chinensis. This is one of the finest rosewoods in the world. And as you can see, this tree was cut down with an axe by the natives. There's the heart of the tree. There's a bit of sapwood. We looked it up. This is a type of wood that dries best in the log form. This log was squared up by hand in the jungles and sold to a lumber merchant. Let's see if we can get a little more color there. There we go. They look like. We're looking at both sides of this log to try to determine what is going to be the best configuration for milling this up. And uh, I like the fact that the pith is up and to the side. Um, what I want to do first is I'm going to true up this top face right here and then I'm going to flip the log over so that I'll be milling from the bottom. There's a little bit of sapwood down there that I want to get rid of, but very, very carefully. Amazing you know log. Back in the shop here, I have a board from this same tree. Actually, it was another log, I'm sorry. But as you can see, I just ran it through the planer and I'm using this hand scraper that John has tuned just beautifully. And the, the grain of this wood is very, very interesting. It's incredibly hard. The wood is very, very heavy, but there is um, resin in all the pores, not silica. It does not damage your, your cutting tools, but it, it scrapes just beautifully, as you can see by the shavings here. The color, the density, the hard, hardness of this is just, just gorgeous. Here's another piece that I've plain scraped, sanded to 800 grit and put a coat of oil on here. It's got some beautiful dark lines in it. Uh, in some areas you can see the near the edge the sapwood came through, which makes a, a really beautiful um, figure. Here's another piece that, so I can Turn up the gain here a little bit. I have not um, worked this piece. This piece is fresh out of the planer. So you can see after you work it, the color just comes out even more intense. But it has very beautiful, distinct black lines. Each of these pieces was milled down to a quarter of an inch. We've been milling up four quarter slabs. We straightened up the top and the bottom. And these pieces of wood are absolutely incredible. We've been stacking them in the order that uh, they come off of the log, and we've been washing them. And uh, the color that we're finding when we wash these is absolutely incredible. We're gonna wash off all the old sawdust and get them nice and clean prior to, to just truly remarkable. Heavy, heavy logs. A little bit of sapwood on that one edge. Amazing. The nickname for this wood is flame wood. Okay, I'm all finished milling the log. I cut most of it up into four quarter. The two top pieces I cut a uh, quarter inch, so I got some pen blanks and I took one half inch piece for some jewelry boxes, but the majority of it is four quarter and then the very last piece here, which had more white wood, I left that one at um, about 12, 12 quarter, it was closer to 10 quarter. Um, I can yield a good eight quarter out of that getting the, uh, the last the um, the white wood out of it, but you do want to keep some of it for leg stock or, or whatever you want. So um, now I'm going to take this wood and let it dry off. I'll open it all back up and completely let it damp off outside. And then I'm going to take it back indoors and stack it and sticker it uh, 
so that it'll be out of the weather and out of the direct sun. As I said before, this log was relatively dry when we started, so um, it uh, made it a little bit harder to cut, but it didn't, uh, remarkably, it did not dull the blade too significantly, so there's not any silica in the wood. Um, this particular log did not have um, the pronounced black streaks in it that the other logs had, or some of the other logs. Uh, it differs from log to log. However, the growth rings on this are incredibly tight, very, very old tree. Um, this tree is uh, likely to be uh, several hundred years old uh, of such a small diameter. So, um, amazing piece of wood. Very, very happy with what we what we, did. Uh, we made an interesting, we made a very interesting discovery here when we were looking at this wood and we uh, counted back in the rings and this log came from Cambodia and if you count back here there is an area that was damaged presumably by um, a bullet or possibly some shrapnel something during uh, the uh, Vietnam War amazingly some of the finest woods in the world come from Cambodia and, and the areas of Vietnam and during the 70s the United States went in there and napalmed and blasted and did so much damage to those forests. I understand war is war, but wow. You know, this stuff doesn't grow on trees, Blair. Book match shrapnel marks. Hey John, could you explain these different rosewoods for me, please? Okay, the, um, this is a piece of uh, what's commercially called East Indian rosewood. Okay. And, and it comes from India, and um, uh, it is also Dalbergia. However, the it's full of silica. In other words, the siliceous inclusions in the pore structure. So working this wood is a nightmare as far as tooling goes. If you sharpen up a scraper or a hand plane and you take a couple of swipes, the edge is totally gone. Uh, the, the, this is also um, the Dalbergia uh, Cochin Chinensis, which is uh, the Cambodian rosewood, and this, in working this, we've discovered it has no silica in it. They're both extremely dense woods. Uh, very, very heavy. It, the, the East Indian rosewood um, is, is quite a bit darker. It's, yes. It's a beautiful piece. There's a little bit of water on the end there. This has got a little bit lighter, and this has got more of a variation in color. Um, it's got the yeah, there is a, there's a fair amount of variation log to log, just like in the Cambodian rosewood in the East Indian. Okay, and this so, piece on the right here is uh, more of an extreme example of what we're finding. That's, that black marking is kind of rare. It's, it's what you're finding closer to the sapwood, and as you get into the center of it, it's more uh, consistent in color. But uh, really interesting. So the the uh, Cambodian rosewood is does not tear up your tools the way the East Indian does. What what are some of the other rosewoods? There's uh, uh, there's Brazilian rosewood. Okay. It's also a Dalbergia. Do you, have you worked that in the solid Tul stock? Tulip wood, I believe, is a Dalbergia. Yeah. Have you worked the uh, Brazilian rosewood? No. Yeah. Okay. I, I don't know whether. What about um, like uh, Cocobolo? Is that a, a rosewood? Um, is it? Anything? I don't know if it is botanically, but it's it's pretty close as far as working properties. It's, it's very, it's, uh, again, very, most of the roadswoods are very dense, and um, the the variable seems to be what, how well they machine up and whether they have silica or not. Oh, okay. Some do and some don't. The tulip wood is, uh, that's a very, very pink wood. Yeah, it looks like a lot like the Cambodian rosewood. Some of those logs were very light, they had pink. Right. With a sort of a amber background. Brazilian rosewood seems to be a little bit oranger, um, closer closer to the orange in here, and it it has a lot of pronounced dark lines in it. So the the um, Brazilian rosewood and the Cambodian rosewood are very very similar. Interesting. This is this one has oil on it. This one over here is is fresh cut and and has not uh, received any sanding. It seems to get a little bit darker as you. Uh, yeah, the, polish it up. This this wood uh, darkens on exposure as opposed to some woods which bleach out. Like the East Indian rosewood will get lighter if it's in a lot of a UV exposure. Oh really? Yeah. That's that's amazing. 
Well, as long as we're talking about rosewood, we might as well show the, the tulip wood. It's a much pinker wood. Uh, this is uh, in the veneer form, but uh, it's a beautiful wood. It's got a lot more white in it. And this one right here with the little box and this particular sample right here is Brazilian rosewood. Uh, very, very rare. It has a little bit more black in it, but not always. You can see that this uh, example has a little bit of black. And it, it, it very, as you can see, it very closely resembles the Cambodian uh, rosewood. On the left, this piece of veneer is the Brazilian rosewood, and on the right is the Cambodian rosewood. Neither of these have any sanding or any finish on them whatsoever. Um, you can see that there are some dark streaks to sort of match that. There is a little variation in color, but um, very, very close match. I went, I went out to the, uh, the lumber area here to see if I could find some cocobolo, and interestingly, I found some paduk, and the paduk was freshly planed here on the right, and I laid these boards up next to it, and in just two weeks' time, it has changed to the duller color. Uh, Paduk is, there's a little brighter image of it. Uh, it's a, an amazing color when you plane it, and it's just beautiful, but it dulls out, and a lot of people are, are really uh, disappointed with it. I've got some cocobolo back here, but none of it has been cleaned up to show the color. Amazing stuff. Now John brought in one more piece of rosewood. He calls it Guatemalan rosewood. He's only got one sticker of it. It's, uh, in my opinion, not quite as attractive as the other rosewoods, but the grain is uh, is fairly, fairly tight. Um, it's a very pretty wood. It's a, a tone wood. It's, it's got um, tonal characteristics, and it's a xylophone wood. Um, other than that, I have no experience with this wood. Thank you.